These incredible VFX shots were created using the most professional techniques and cost well over 10 million dollars. <coughs> <coughs> Where is the green screen? Where are the tracking markers? What is this? James, this is disgusting. Today we are going to be making some VFX that is so quick, lazy and dirty that it shouldn't look very good, but it sort of does. By the way, this is my friend Isaac. I don't like him, so let's go and kill him. So you might be wondering, did Isaac actually have to die? Yes, he did. Because when we were 16, he stole my girlfriend from me. Naturally, we had a fight, which I lost. But you know, I've had six years to prepare, and prepare I did. So that's why he's dead. Anyway, I started by going over to Isaac's apartment. Here is the location. We filmed the scene fully handheld to give it a realistic documentary feel. Now, it would be smart to capture a HDRI of the environment to help with the lighting, but I didn't bring my 360 camera. So yeah, what I did instead was capture a bunch of photos of the hallways. Now we need to track our footage. To do that, I used a really cool software called Mocha Pro. After I was done, I exported the data as a USD file, which I can import into Blender. Now for the 3D model. I got this one from CG Trader. Usually I try and get free 3D models, but this character is really awesome and I was a little bit wine drunk the night that I bought it, so, you know, I wasn't really being smart with my money. I could then bring the model into Mixamo, which is a website where you can get free animations. When I tried to import in the model, it said, unable to map skeleton. This is because the model has a roughness map connected, and for some reason Mixamo is racist against roughness maps. So I brought the model into Blender first and disconnected its roughness map, then exported it as an FBX file and brought it back into Mixamo. I then got this running animation, walking one, and some idle ones. I also got the gun model from productioncrate.com. So let's import our tracking data into a new Blender scene. I will set the camera's background to be my footage. Then in comes the model. Let's loop this animation by switching to the graph editor. I will hit channels, extrapolation mode, then cyclic. Now he runs forever. You run for hours. Days. What, what? Days? If you try and move the armature to animate it forward, it will just move back to its original position, which sucks. So I will add a new empty and use it to control the armature. So just parent the armature to this new empty. And since I will have a group of robots, I will add another empty and parent the robot empty to this empty so that I can have one empty that controls them all. Then I just gotta animate the control empty forward until the timing of the animation looks right. I'll give the robot its gun by selecting the armature, going into pose mode, selecting the wrist bone, then back into object mode, then control P to parent the gun to that bone. There. Now just put the gun in his hands. Then I am free to duplicate the guys around. Now for the lighting. For these dark shots, all I did was have the background color be black, then used a couple of area lights placed in the position of the existing lights in my scene. I then added a plane and modeled a little bit of the hallway and set this plane to a shadow catcher. Make sure to uncheck everything except camera and shadow so that the plane doesn't cast light on the model and only receives its shadow. For these shots which had more light in them, I used a Blender add-on called Auto Depth AI, which creates depth maps of images. 
I put in a photo of my hallway, which I took earlier, and it gave me this. Nice. Now I can move this hallway model into position and turn it off in the camera view. So now my robot model receives semi-accurate lighting and reflections. Shit. Let's talk about the fully CGI shots now. We're done with the real footage stuff. Ew. Well, this one shot is, um, it's got a bit of real footage. Anyway, I got this shot of me walking in the house, then used AI to cut me out. And I of course tracked the footage using my best friend, Mocha Pro. I then got this ship 3D model from Sketchfab, and yes, I know it costs money. No, I was not drunk when I bought it. I bought it a long time ago. I didn't buy it for this video. Liar! I then got this picture of a city at night from Pexels.com. Then in a new Blender scene, I brought in the ship, put myself in using images as planes, then the camera track, and then the picture and pushed it way out into the distance. I then put in some lightning assets from ProductionCrate.com. Now for this shot, I used the same ship model from before, and the same city picture. I didn't actually move the ship itself, instead I moved the camera around the ship, just like they did with the original Star Wars movies. Instead they were using actual proper models and cameras, whereas I'm using CGI. I added a camera and gave it a track 2 constraint and set the ship model as the target. Then I just animated the camera in a straight line and it looks like the ship is flying by the camera. Okay, this shot. Back in Mixamo, I gave the robot model a flying animation. I then had to make an amazing 3D model of myself. So I took a picture of myself in a T-pose and put it in Tripo AI and it gave me this. Ah oh, yes, brilliant. Now I can put me in Mixamo and get the same flying animation. I then attached everyone to a control empty and animated it falling to the ground. For the camera movement, I just parented a new camera to that same empty and then used this free add-on called Shakeify to add realistic camera shake. Then for the thrusters, I used this really cool jet flame add-on. And for this final shot, I used all of the same models from before, set to a walking animation. I got this car model from ProductionCrate.com and threw it in with this road asset from the Urbanic Blender add-on. Then just another city picture from Pexels.com. All very lazy and dumb. Now get out of my house.